Good evening, my name is Rob Savolka. I'm the president of Courageous Christians United. In my video, Mormonism Denies the Eternal Father and the Eternal Son, I basically critique the LDS Godhead as being a weak, polytheistic team that rules over some worlds, but literally not all worlds. I ended that video by offering a uh, cr a Christian doctrine of monotheism. Namely, that there's only one being who is God, the creator of literally everything outside himself. Now, in this video, I'd like to talk to you about the Christian doctrine of the Trinity and contrast that with two other views to help you see clearly what it is. Because, you know, Mormons belie their own ignorance on this subject when they ask the Christian questions like, well, who was Jesus praying to in the garden? Was uh, he praying to himself? Or what was going on at the baptism of Jesus? Was a ventriloquist act going on when the Father's voice is being thrown out of heaven and Jesus was being baptized? Well, to answer these questions, imagine, if you will, we have a spectrum here. Okay? And on one end of the spectrum, we have what's called modalism. Now, modalism has gone by uh, different names anciently. It's gone by Sibelianism, after a guy named Sibelius. It's also gone by the Latin Patripassianism. Patri, which means father. Passionism means uh, the passion, suffering, right? We know about the passion of the Christ. Well, in this case, it was actually the passion of the father. Famous modalists today are found uh, in the United Pentecostal Church as well as the Apostolic Church. Not all Pentecostals, but in the United Pentecostal Church, they represent what's called modalism. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes has been described as a modalist. Phillips, Craig, and Dean, uh, very well-known Christian music artists, quote-unquote Christian music artists, as well as ministers. This view basically says that God is one being who is one person who has different titles or different ways of appearing or manifesting. For example, I am a father, okay? But I am also a son. I am also president. I am also husband. I am also, fr I, I have all sorts of different ways of appearing, okay? But I am still one person. That is what modalism believes God is. He's one person with different ways of appearing. Now, on this other end of the spectrum, we have Mormonism. And Mormonism is basically polytheistic. And to demonstrate this, I have a couple quotes for you. First, Joseph Smith, the founding prophet of the Mormon Church, he said in the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith, page 370, in the pre-2002 edition, he said this, I will preach on the plurality of God. I wish to declare I have always and in all congregations when I have preached on the subject of deity, it has been the plurality of God's. Now, Bruce McConkie clarified more specifically the Godhead. In Mormon Doctrine, Bruce McConkie was a late general authority in Mormon Doctrine, page 576 through 577, he says three separate personages, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, comprise the Godhead. As each of these persons is a God, it is evident from this standpoint alone that a plurality of gods exist. To us speaking in the proper finite sense, these three are the only gods we worship. But in addition, there is an infinite number of holy personages drawn from worlds without number who have passed on to exaltation and are thus gods. 
Now, in between these two opposing views, modalism and Mormonism, you have what's called traditional Christianity. Particularly in its Western manifestations, it says that God exists from all eternity as three... Now listen to the terms very carefully that I'm going to use because they're very helpful in this regard. God exists eternally as three distinct persons who are co-equal and have one divine purpose. They're one in the nature that they share and they make up one divine being or substance. All right? So for Christians, there are areas of agreement as well as disagreement with modalism as well as Mormonism. Areas of agreement. Number one, like modalism, God is one God. There's only one being who is God. Okay? Number two, like Mormonism, Christians believe that there are three different or distinct persons. Now, as far as disagreement goes, in contrast to the modalists, God isn't one person with different ways of appearing. He's actually three persons like Mormonism teaches. But, number two, unlike Mormonism, God isn't three separate persons or gods. He's actually one God. This is why when LDS asked the Christian, well, what was going on at the baptism of Jesus, or who was Jesus praying to? Well, the, the answer for the Christian is another person, okay? For the Christian, there has not been three separate gods, each exalted to that position, who simply act as one God. There's only been one God who exists in three distinct, inseparable persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As I stated in the former video, the Father has literally always been the Father, and the Son has literally always been the Son. Not true for Mormonism because the father had to grow up and get a wife and then impregnate that wife to give birth to a son. Well, now, how can this be? Well, I have here a Life ma magazine article of Brittany and Abby, radically conjoined twins. The title of the article is One Body, Two Souls. They have two heads two arms, two legs, one torso. Okay, It's not altogether clear whether they represent one human being or two human beings. Now, before you think that I believe that God is a man with three heads, I don't. Okay, I don't even believe that God in his nature is a man at all. The point is to simply get you to see that we have examples of the Trinity in the created order. So it shouldn't be that hard to get. We have examples of persons who may be one in purpose. For example, Abby and Brittany can drive a car together. They're one in nature. They share humanness and they're one being or uh, they share one substance. Okay. Now, there are many biblical reasons why Christians hold to a God of this sort, but I'll have to leave that to another video. Let me just say that cultists or pseudo-Christians assume the Trinity was invented at the Council of Nicaea. However, it was simply the systematic formulation in precise philosophical, theological language that was brought about there. The basis was always the Bible. The biblical text in an effort to equally value each member of the Trinity without lapsing into pagan Hellenistic philosophy polytheism, which Mormonism is famous for today. Now, simply because the language 
of or, or the terms of uh, the philosophers and theologians isn't in the Bible doesn't entail that the meaning isn't found in the Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, cultists, cultists claim the term Trinity isn't in the Bible. But so what? The Bible or uh, moral objectivism isn't found in the Bible either. But Mormons believe in the Bible and they believe in moral objectivism. Thanks for watching and contend earnestly for the faith once for all delivered to the saints.